Hi everyone, welcome to Tathastu. I'm Minakshi and today we are going to discuss a very interesting and important topic which is combating gender stereotypes. So, a good move has been initiated by Supreme Court of India to combat gender stereotypes. You Usually, in day-to-day -day life, we talk a lot about women empowerment where we say that women should have the freedom to take their own decision. They should have their own liberty to take decision in their career, in their education or their marriage. But still, we have lots of gender stereotypes or stereotypes associated with them like a women should behave in a certain certain way, should talk in a very calm voice, should not get too much angry, you know, should uh, the color pink is associated with women that they like only pink color. So, there are lots of things, women should have long hair, so there are lots of things which have, we have normalized that it is okay, that women have to behave like this, which, uh, but it is actually not okay. okay. These are the stereotypes which we have created, we have created using certain words that these words can be used for a woman. But now, Supreme Court has decided that this is not, it is not okay to use those words and they, they have released a handbooks in which other phrases or the alternative words or phrases which can be used in place of those particular words which will, we will be discussing. The Supreme Court has released that they, we will be using those words or phrases while delivering the judgment and specifically this handbook is for the lawyers and the judges to be used. So, beginning with the context, let's see why the piece is a uh, why the topic is in news because the Supreme Court of India, the highest apex body, judicial body of India has taken a significant step to challenge the outdated ideas where the women, where there are lots of gender stereotypes, where there are words associated with women. So, Supreme Court has taken this initiative that instead of those words, we will be using other phrases or words, especially those now the ideas especially those affecting women okay? the ideas which affect women particularly by releasing a special guide and the special guide is the handbook which is of which contains 30 pages now this guide introduces new words the words which i'm talking about which we will discuss thoroughly so the guide introduced new new words for lawyer and judges to use in court aiming to fight harmful beliefs. So, it is very important for a judicial system, for a judiciary to start, at least start this initiative where they, they are trying to fight these stereotypes. We will discuss this also. Let's see the words which will, which are introduced in this handbook. So, first word is affair. It is very commonly used in court by the lawyers or while delivering a verdict. So, instead of affair, the word which will be used is relationship outside of marriage. Okay? Secondly, it is career women and you can see over here it is fallen women. So, women are uh, differentiated, distinguished in various categories but instead of all those, Supreme Court has decided that only a single word will be used which is women. A woman is a woman be it career women or the other terms which we use for them, fallen women. So, a woman will be represented by a single word which is women only. Now, Eve teasing. So, lots of women when they go outside, they, feel, uh, they, feel, they have this fear of uh, facing this Eve teasing. So, Eve teasing ki jaga, the word which will be used is street sexual harassment, housewife. Now, the, whenever, you know, someone used to ask what your mother do. So, she is a housewife. But our mother works from morning to night for us. Okay? She makes our home. That is why Supreme Court has decided that instead of the word housewife, another word which is known as homemaker. As the, our mother makes our home. She works day and night for us, for our happiness, for everything. Everything she does for us. Okay? She, she, makes the, she makes the home in a beautiful place. So the Supreme Court has decided that instead of the word housewife, the word homemaker would be Use their other terms as well. For example, a marriageable age. So, Supreme Court has decided a woman who has attained the legal age required to marry because the legal age is 18 for women to marry. Uh, and from 18, uh, at, the, at this age, where many women are pressurized to get married. So that, that is why it was termed as a marriageable age. But instead of saying it, a woman who has attained the legal age required to marry because there is no such thing as marriageable age. 
Now moving on, mistress has been replaced by a woman with whom a man had romantic or sexual relationship. Now instead of the word prostitute, a word sex worker would be used. Or moving on, provider or uh, breadwinner word employed or earning will be used. So these are the few terms which you be uh, which even the uh, judges while delivering the verdict use very commonly. So they have tried to change these outdated ideas there are other <coughs> stereotypes as well which are associated with women most of, most common among it is that women are physically weaker than men okay man and women both are physiologically different we know that that both have physic uh, they are physiologically and biologically different but that doesn't mean that women are physically weak that depends on nutrition as well as the genetics also so this is a stereotype which may not be true that women are physically weaker than men other they are <coughs> other stereotype is women who work outside of the home do not care about children now nowadays when we talk about women empowerment women should go out they should be independent and on the other hand we are saying that the women who work outside of their home they don't care about the children so instead of that the handbook says that it is no correlation with the women's love or concern for her children we have lot of working women we have lot of women workforce so that doesn't mean that they don't care for their children they vouch they vouch for their children they want to give the best to their children that is why some of the women are working so there is no correlation that if you're working outside then the that women does not love their children or does not care about them now man who sexually assault or rape are typically strangers and not known to women this is a very common stereotype associated with the rape cases but very often according to uh, supreme court handbook very often those men are known to women so supreme court has also tried to break this stereotype moving on it is said that rape is a crime which taints the honor of the survivor or the victim and then the survivor or victim should marry marry him but rape does not taint the honor of the survivor or victim the marriage of the rapist to survivor does not you know the offense the criminal criminal offense done by that person cannot be undone by marriage so supreme court has tried to break this also and transgender individuals cannot be raped this is a very very common stereotype associated in our societies uh, let's see what supreme court says on it transgender indi individuals can be raped in fact transgender individuals are one of the groups which are most vulnerable to these sexual violence so there are lot of things which the supreme court has tried to address in these handbooks as we have seen now moving on what is the handbook so this handbook is a 30 page booklet which aims to assist we have seen judges and lawyers judges and the legal community in identifying understanding and then combating those stereotypes special uh, specifically about women we have seen how they have tried to change the, uh, those words which seems to be very derogatory towards uh, women or these stereotypes very common stereotypes which are associated in our society in fact women face in their day-to-day -day life for example like you should take care of your child instead of going to office you should stay at home so these are very common stereotypes and which our society believes to be normal it is normal there's nothing wrong in it and you know? there are lots of things about it so we have seen how supreme court has addressed those small things also which will which matters a lot now this handbook also identifies common stereotypical words and phrases which are used by many of the judges in routine judgments so these were the many of the words which are used in the judgments also so even you know they, that would have an impact when the judiciary is using these kinds of words so let's see why these words were changed now why it is important for judges to use the right words as i've said let's see about the language a judge uses reflects not only their interpretation of law but the perception of the society as well you know when when something happens we uh, file a case you know we want justice so what if the judges use those kind of words that would have an impact on our mind also so the language it judges use reflects their interpretation ki how they interpret law 
as well as the perception of the society because then the society will perceive it that way and even when the use of stereotypes does not alter the outcome of a case so these stereotypes you know the, the words which we use but that doesn't mean that those words used to alter the outcome of a case be judgment wahi hoga hai na so these stereotypical language may reinforce ideas contrary to our constitutional ethos our constitution keeps everyone at equality we have so many fundamental rights which are for everyone so uh, while using those words although the judgment can't be varied but it is ag against our constitutional ethics now language is critical to life of the law words are the vehicle through which the values of law are communicated okay we commonly say think before you speak so right? we should think before we speak that is why it is said ki those words also matter okay the in which the judgment have been delivered now moving on what are the objectives and scope of this handbook which we have discussed number 1 is challenging the old belief the supreme court initiative aims to discard the old fashioned or the outdated words the times are changing we are moving towards using the artificial intelligence the artificial inte what does artificial intelligence do basically try to mimic humans so what will we teach that so this uh, we are moving as i said we are uh, developing technologically that means we ha also have to evolve we have to break these stereotypes you know so that is why This handbook tries to challenge the old belief that Supreme Court initiative aims to discard old fa old fashioned and harmful stereotypes particularly related to women through the handbook on combating gender uh, gender stereotypes now chief justice of india's vision the handbook introduced by chief justice dy chandrachud is a respectable honorable chief justice who explains its purpose to help legal professional recognize and counter gender stereotypes as we have seen that it is important for the judiciary because what they perceive is perceived by the society then now language transformation the handbook includes a glossary of terms there are lots of terms which we have seen which will be altered which will be which they have given alternative words or phrases to be used instead of those word that contribute to gender bias and suggest better alternatives to be used in the legal legal outcomes now moving on why such a move was taken number 1 is language inflicting stereotype the handbook points out terms in legal language that promote gender bias and provide suggestions for change okay there we have seen lots of word which promote those stereotypes or which are derogatory that is why supreme court decided that it may inflict those stereotypes it may reinforce those stereotypes that is why it has been decided by supreme court to change it now examples of change instead of using adulteress the handbook recommends using women who is engaged in sexual relations outside of marriage so these are the alternatives given by those uh, given by that handbook now removing bias the handbook encourage using simple term like women and wife we have seen how fallen women or career women will now be called a women only instead of prefix like chaste or obedient moving towards next using neutral language instead of negatively using effeminate the handbook suggest using neutral terms like confident or responsible so these are some of the changes which will be which has been introduced by this out uh, handbook now moving to next topic avoiding labeling so there are certain labels so these word gives you certain label that is why this change has been introduced to avoid that labeling so empowering language the handbook suggests using survivor or victim to those in, uh, to describe those individuals which are affected by sexual violence and respecting the preferences the choice between survivor and victim should be based on the individual preference that is why it has given the power to the individual to, to make the choice between the survivor and the victim now moving towards this conscious reporting of 
cases so separating attire and consent the uh, consent the handbook emphasized that a person's clothing should never be an excuse un for unwanted touching or consent consent remains essential especially in the cases of the sexual violence or rape you know, they, anyone's cloth can pr uh, provoke you to do such a heinous crime secondly is uh, second is breaking stereotypes the handbook rejects the idea that delayed reporting of sexual assault meaning that it didn't happen and thirdly that it encourages reporting also the handbook acknowledges the bravery required to report sexual offenses due to societal pressure as the women was considered to be responsible or the women's clothes are considered to be responsible for for the for the main cause of rape now what are the negative effects of gender stereotype what uh, basically the word gender stereotype will be tip uh, where we typically you know uh, uh, associate some facts as i have said you know give how women should behave how they should talk so these are all stereotype it should be equal for everyone so these uh, gender stereotyping or these gender stereotypes also have negative effects number one is widespread impact gender stereotypes leads to exclusion and prejudice in workplace schools and public places where you know women uh, they don't need to uh, educate much okay they don't uh, need to go to uh, colleges if they have completed their school it is okay they should learn cooking at very early age so this all, all these things have no very very you know widespread impact or a negative impact now moving toward educational example the handbook illustrates how to stereotype how stereotypes affect student from marginalized communities adding stress during exams moving towards the government data minister subhash sarkar's data on dropout rates among marginalized students is such an example now legal reforms rebutting gender gender stereotypes there are cases for equality the supreme court points out cases that reject stereotypes like joseph shain versus union of india which struck down the adultery law and their example rulings as well the court's decision in cases like state of jharkhand versus shalendra kumar rai and state of punjab versus gurmeet singh are explained so these are other legal reforms where these gender stereotypes were broken <clears throat> so concludingly what we can say is by offering alternatives to outdated and biased language the handbook aims not only to reshape legal discussion but also societal view you point that means that uh, if the uh, ju judges or the judiciary or the legal they they will take decision in that way that will also in uh, in uh, that will also influence our society and now its potential impact is anticipated to extend beyond legal matters influencing everybody's perspective and it will contribute towards a more equitable more egalitarian and a more just society i hope all the concepts are clear and you find the video interesting if it is so please do like the video and subscribe to our channel thank you